Hi, I'm Josh Aquin in the Customer Service Department at Park Industries. And on this video, we're gonna be talking about vacuum water flow alarms. So we're gonna come down by our vacuum pump down here and first by shutting our water off right here. You can do it there or at the wall. Then we'll come by our vacuum pump and our incoming water line comes in on the right side here for the water, um, water manifold assembly. Just gonna use a wrench. Pull this off and you can start out by making sure you have the proper water flow to the pump. And uh, so we'll just turn our, you can turn the water back on and you should be getting at least two gallons a minute of water flow coming out of this line. Once we verify that we do have enough water flow, we can connect this line back up. Then we can come over by our, our uh, filter Y strainer assembly here. Screw the Y strainer plug, and then in here is going to be a, a metal mesh filter. Now if yours is corroded, you can replace these, and what we're looking for is if there's a lot of debris on it. We have a little bit of settlement on there, but not too much, and a little bit inside there. Let's see if we can get that on the camera there. A little bit inside there, so we can just rinse that off and clean that filter out. Just going to start the threads on this one to make sure they're just to start them and then I'll tighten that up after this video here. So the second thing we'll want to do is check our water flow on the exiting side and see if we're actually getting restrictions. So we can come on the left side here and I'm gonna disconnect off of the pump here. And then what we can do is we can put this into a bucket to measure our water flow. On the, so on the on off valve, you don't wanna just turn your vacuum pump on to make the water flow, because we do not wanna run the pump dry. So on the on off valve, right here is a recessed flat headed screw. And if we just take a flat head screwdriver and turn that 90 degrees, that will turn our water on. Our water is currently off right now for this video, but um, that would turn our water on and we'd get water flow here. If we have water flow here, we wanna make sure we're getting at least 1.4 gallons a minute. That will give you your optimal vacuum. If you do not have water flow here, then we have a restriction in here. So it is, we already cleaned the strainer, so our restriction is either in the on-off valve, in the regulator, or in the switch itself. So we would need to disassemble this and see where our restriction is coming from. If uh, So what we'd be able to do is, same thing, just keep this off, split it here, just I usually like to split it in half, and see if we have water coming out of this valve. Um, if we do not, we want to pull this valve apart and then we can, it's just four bolts on the top here, and clean that up. There might be some debris stuck in there. If we do have water flow, we can move on to our regulator. And usually where these will clog is on the back side of the regulator, there is a, a nut that also has like a rubber plunger in it. Um, and that's where it will clog there. Then we could, if we do have water flow here, then we have some debris caught in our flow sensor. So we could unscrew this um, nut here and that would split the flow sensor and there'll be a spring and a piece of plastic in there that the flow sensor reads when we have the proper water flow there. If you do have proper water flow coming through the whole thing, but you still have the flow sensor alarm, we can come here.
disconnect our cable for our flow sensor. And some people, these are laying in water and mud and stuff like that, so they they can get corroded inside there. So I can just pull the back nut off, unscrew this sensor here, and then I can just pull that back and I can make sure that the terminals look good, the wire's not corroded or anything like that. That I'm not making connection when the flow switch is actually triggered. If you're hooking up a flow switch, It'll be terminals one and four. There's small numbers there. The camera probably will not pick that up, but there's small numbers there that you can um, read and it'll be on the terminals one and four to make connection there. Let's get this back all back together here. I'm not twisting my wires off or anything. So once I have everything connected back up, put everything back. And then if I have good water flow and my switch is reading correctly, wires are good and everything, I should not get the water flow alarms again. If I have good water flow and my wires look good, I could have a bad flow sensor there if there's no debris holding that or anything. So that is how to troubleshoot water flow alarms, vacuum water flow alarms I should say there. Uh, we'll be posting more videos every week on how to troubleshoot any alarms or anything like that on our website. Thank you.